Hot Haven became part of the city of New York. And of course, this led to further growth. In the 1860s, the first horse cars came into the area across what is now the Third Avenue Bridge. Uh, this, of course, provided some commuter service, and they all funneled into the Third Avenue Bridge to 129th Street and Third Avenue, where, when the Third Avenue L was erected, people could then transfer to the L. The L itself came into the Bronx in 1888 and then advanced up into further into Mott Haven in the 1890s. By the 1890s, the horse cars were replaced by electrified trolleys. And indeed, the Bronx trolleys were electrified before the Manhattan trolleys were. It's hard to believe, but it's true. Um, throughout the 20th century, Mott Haven has preserved its industrial character and its warehouse character. It had a very large Irish population up until the period just after World War II. It was about World War II that an increasing number of Hispanics started coming into the area, and today the overwhelming majority of the people who live in Mott Haven are Hispanic. Uh, originally from Puerto Rico, you may find some non-Puerto Rican Hispanics here as well. So on this tour, we're going to see a lot of the remnants of the past and also some of the new things as well. Now above us is the arch that enables the Grand Concourse to cross over 138th Street. Now this arch uh, was built in the 1930s and originally this part of the Grand Concourse, the lower part of the Grand Concourse, was called Mott Avenue. In 1927, Mott Avenue was widened and it was decided to take the name Grand Concourse which started at 161st Street and extended further down. But it was originally Mott Avenue. Uh, the Major Deegan Expressway, which has its, uh, its exit uh, just one block from here, uh, was also built in 1936. Uh, it was built as the approach road to the Triborough Bridge. Now, the question is, of course, is who the heck is Major Deegan? <laughs> All right. Major William F. Deegan never fought a battle in his entire life. He was in the Quartermaster Corps, making his living giving out underwear to the troops. Uh, however, in the 1920s, he became Jimmy Walker's Tenement House Commissioner. And in the 1930s, he was the president of the Bronx Chamber of Commerce. And in 1936, he died, which only goes to prove that if you're going to be remembered, you have to pick your spots. Because when he died, they just completed the expressway and they were looking to name it after somebody. And somebody piped up and said, we gotta remember old Bill Deegan somehow. So they named the expressway after him. In the 1950s, the expressway was extended from 138th Street northward to join the newly built uh, New York State Thruway. And that's how it got to be uh, all over the western side of the Bronx. The Madison Avenue Bridge which is now painted uh, delightful lavender. Uh, you can see the superstructure at the end. Uh, was built in 1910. Uh, it is uh, 300 feet long, and it shows the influence of Manhattan as opposed to the Bronx. It is, after all, called the Madison Avenue Bridge, not the 138th Street Bridge. Okay. Now, uh, over on the other side, uh, you see the railroad tracks. Now, those railroad tracks are for the Metro North Railroad, uh, the commuter line. It also carries Amtrak trains. It was originally the line of the New York and Harlem River Railroad, which most people believe was part of the New York Central System, but administratively, it was never part of the New York Central System. It was always the New York Central and New York and Harlem River Railroads. Um, these railroads the tracks originally came across the Harlem River in 1841. Jordan L. Mott sold the land to the railroad. Now, the interesting thing is that there is a clause in the deed that says that if the railroad company no longer maintains a schedule at Mott Haven, then Jordan L. Mott or his descendants have the right to take back the title to the right of way of the railroad. Two years ago, I met Jordan L. Mott VI, and I told him that. He has consulted his lawyers. 
right over there, there is a, um, a rather modern building uh, saying Auto Body and Repair, P&P Auto Parts. That building was put there in the uh, 19, early 60s on the site of the Mott Haven Railroad Station. The original Mott Haven Railroad Station was a very handsome building with a tall clock tower. And regularly, trains would stop there for commuter runs. In the 1960s, the railroad decided that there wasn't enough passenger interest, and so they sold the land, destroyed the station, and put that up in its place. That may have been a mistake. <laughs> Uh, we will know whenever you go to Grand Central Station intending to go to Albany or Buffalo or Points West uh, if sometime in the future the train will have to stop and pay a toll to Jordan Elmont the sixth. Okay. Right, now we'll just move just beyond this, uh, uh, this arch. I want to show you something on the arch itself. Okay. Okay. You see a little um, embossed bit of work sticking out there. Uh, an eagle on top of uh, half of a world over a shield bearing the shining face of the sun rising from the sea, below which is a ribbon with a Latin motto, Ne Cade Malis, all enclosed in a laurel wreath. That is the official seal of the borough of the Bronx. No, ladies and gentlemen, the official seal is not in the Bronx Zoo. That is the official that is the official seal of the borough of the Bronx. Now, why is that the seal? Well, supposedly, around 1912, somebody did some research and said that that is the family crest of the Bronx family. And that was accepted in 1912, and the official borough flag was designed then, and the borough seal was designed then as well. Now, the eagle faces towards the east, showing uh, that there is some memory of coming from Europe. It is on half a world, uh, which is supposedly the New World. The shield so shows the sun rising out of the sea. The sun is the coming of peace and liberty. The sea means commerce. The motto, ne cede malus, means yield not to evil. And the laurel wreath denotes honor and fame. And that is the official seal of the borough of the Bronx. And I think that's a pretty good one, considering what it all stands for. OK, now we go further to Canal Place. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, we are now standing on a street that is called Canal Place. Now, Canal Place is called this way because it was originally a canal. Now, you guys who are standing off the curb, you would be in water. Um, the canal went from the Harlem River, which was beyond the wall that you see at the end. The wall is the Major Deegan Expressway. And originally extended up here to 138th Street. Then later on, it was extended further north to 144th Street, and you could see it make its turn towards the north uh, when you turn it around. Now. The Mott Haven Canal was the original name of this, and the Mott Haven Canal was built by Jordan L. Mott, and he did it in order to promote industry. Uh, canal boats were a major freight carrier in the 1840s. Railroads had just been coming in. Most of the traffic still traveled by water as the cheapest way to move. So therefore, if you had a canal, Various industrial concerns could build their factories by the side of the canal and then can be serviced by the canal boats. That was the reason for it. Now, the second stage, which is north of 138th Street, was, uh, was built later by William E. Ryder and Theodore Conkling. They purchased land from Jordan L. Mott in the 1870s, and they decided to extend the canal because it would bring them money, obviously. Uh, at 138th Street, which is where we are now, right across the street, you see a rather nondescript uh, whitewashed building. Uh, it is in that, uh, in that particular building, um, not in that building, but on the side of that building, that you had a very major concern that served the Bronx for many, many decades, and that was the Stevens Coal Company. The Stevens Coal Company was located right over there. Now, in order to get traffic 